pretty exciting. It's exciting to have a new like alcohol ink medium really in our in our world. And get out some samples and see. So there's a, there's a hardcore panel with some Yupo. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, really, really pretty. <laughs> that's yeah. stunning. Cool backgrounds. Just some cool stuff we can do so uh, with alcohol inks. So and, I'll go through and, and just. And you're mixing, demo like you're those. using some pearls and some not pearls, you said. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's my preference, but you don't always have to. I mean, I'll show you when I demo it that you don't always have to use uh, pearls, but you don't always have to use pearls or ink. It's really uh, a whole new way to add colorants with alcohol inks. So when you use alcohol inks, if you're working on the tonic media mat, you want to go ahead and get rid of your craft mat, okay? Because alcohol ink will stain this. If you don't care that it's stained, I don't care that it's stained because it still works absolutely perfect, right? If you want to keep it nice and somewhat white, just don't use alcohol ink on uh, the mat. But the alcohol pearls, really interesting to the alcohol ink world because for years, I mean, alcohol inks have been in Ranger's line for about 10 years, which is hard to believe. Alcohol inks are a translucent dye, right? When we add this color onto the surface, it's translucent. And alcohol inks are designed for non-porous surfaces, metal, glass, acetate, acrylic, gloss paper, but there's a lot of other great substrates. And you can use alcohol ink just by simply dripping it on and tinting something, right? Alcohol inks don't always have to be these crazy wild backgrounds. They could be as simple as just doing a wash of color onto something that you couldn't normally ink with an ink pad, right? But in addition to alcohol inks, we also released metallic mixatives. And a metallic mixative is a pigment for the solvent. And that's really what our alcohol ink world has been. It's been alcohol ink, mixative, and then of course blending solution, right? Now blending solution, the only thing new to that is that now they have a mini version that fits into your tin. So for those that are traveling, I don't know why everyone was so excited about this, but they certainly were excited about a baby bottle of blending solution. <laughs> that's like one portion size for me. Like that's like a card. Because I love blending solution. I use it more than anything. So for years, this is what we've been doing. And when you, when you mix these two, when you use alcohol ink with mixative, these two kind of fight with each other. If you use the solvent and you use this pigment, they kind of actually separate. And that's what creates those backgrounds, that polished stone, agates, those things that you see uh, in those videos. That's really what this has been. But now we have a whole new kind of ink. And I think that was inspired by oxide, right? When we figured out the formulation for oxide about two years ago, that dye and pigment, I think that got our chemists going, I wonder if that would work in the alcohol ink environment. And that's what it came up with. These alcohol pearls are pearlescent alcohol inks, which means that pearl, that colorant, even something soft like Enchanted, that colorant is fused to the ink. So our ink, and you can just see if the light just hits it, it has a very subtle pearlescent shimmer. Every single color just has that shimmer of pearl. And the nice thing about it is that pearl is not a mixative. That pearl will not separate from its coloring. It is part of that ink. So when you use it, you're going to get that beautiful luster over the whole surface, and there is no texture to this. You can do feel -o vision it's completely smooth, right? So you would expect that to have some texture. You would expect like a mixative to have that pigment that sits over the top. But these pearls do not because it's all part of that same ink. Smooth as can be, you have to. It's wild, it's very, very cool. So one of the first questions I was asked when we did this, now we have 12 colors of pearls. And when I released these 12 colors, I wanted something totally different. I wanted to evoke a different feel for the maker. So instead of sticking into the true traditional palette, I picked some colors and we kind of tweaked them and then I wanted to give them names. So we have names like alchemy and smolder and deception and envy and uh, enchantment and I don't know, mineral, <laughs> celestial. They're just cool, sublime. I wanted just kind of give this feeling of cool color on a background. And these pearls, they are very different than a mixative, right? Because we do have a pearl mixative. Now, a pearl mixative is just going to be a pearl additive. And if you think, wait, I can just take my ink, add that pearl mixative, and make my own. Well, not really, because a mixative, as I mentioned, is a pigment. And if you try to use alcohol ink and a pearl mixative, which is what this is, this is my background, which in fact is pearly, but when the light hits it, it's white. Because that white pearl from that mixative is always gonna float to the top and cover my background. This is a very similar color. This is Intrigue. 
this is the same color in alcohol pearls. So you can see that that color, no, because each one of these, if you look at the bottom of the bottles, that's why I showed you here, each color has its own color of pearl. That pearl becomes part of the ink versus just a pearl that sits on top. So understanding that it's totally different right from go is important as we go through the demo because right away you're like, oh, well, I'll just use a mixative to do all the stuff he's doing. It's just not gonna be the same effect. Now, if you add these pearls onto a background and use all the colors together, you get a beautiful shimmery background, okay? But same thing, still totally smooth. So you would think by adding all of these layers, we would start getting this buildup of a pigment, but it's not, it's smooth. I know, Debbie, she was like, I need to feel that. <laughs> You're saying it's smooth, but it is not smooth. It would be, it's smooth, it is. It has a cool kind of finish to it. And how they can go on, they can go on a lot of different substrates. So let's talk about that. Alcohol Ink Yupo is a great paper. It's a synthetic paper. It's made by a company called Yupo. And it's a plastic paper. And when we introduced this to the paper craft market a few years ago, it wasn't new to the art world. They've been using Yupo for years and years. But having it in a manageable size is really nice. Because it's synthetic, it gave us way more play time, a lot more fluid nature on our backgrounds that we weren't getting with Alcohol Ink cardstock. But as we started coming out with new inks, that wasn't enough. We also wanted to add new substrates or new surfaces. So we have three new alcohol ink surfaces as well. We have an alcohol ink black cardstock. Now, I would have to say I'm not a fan of black ink or black cardstock when it comes to alcohol ink because you lose it. Like, that's what you get, yeah. So unless you're putting white on there, you don't get any color because even the pearls, believe it or not, are translucent. Right? So even though it's got that pearl, it's part of the ink. So if you think, oh, I'll just shake that pearl on there, it's going to go right to black. You have to use the snow cap mixative in order to get your colors to show. And that's about as good as I can get on this. This was really designed for painters. So people like Sharon Harris that paints with alcohol ink, they can paint on this and it creates beautiful backgrounds. But just because I wasn't going to use for alcohol ink didn't mean I didn't care about it. So when they were selecting this black paper, I was so particular, probably more than the other surfaces, <laughs> because I've always wanted a good black cardstock. I use it in ideology, I use it on my Sizzix projects, I like to matte my artwork. If you do something simple and you want a black cardstock, I wanted something completely matte, but more than anything, have a cool finish. I'm gonna pass this sheet around, you've gotta feel it. It feels like rubber. It's this suede goodness, and that's one sheet of paper. Thick, I know, it's super thick. So, I know, it's like, it's thicker than cardstock. It's almost like a matte board, but it will die cut beautifully. It will uh, work as divider pages into a journal. It's just a nice, nice paper. So, that is our black cardstock. Then we have some kind of effect cardstocks. This is a brushed silver. So this is a silver metallic, but it's not that mirrored card, so it offers a really nice soft vintage. So even if you're gonna do something with an embossing folder and never use ink, it's a beautiful paper because any other mirrored cardstock, even the craft metallic, is that mirrored, that reflective cardstock. And this just has that nice metallic shine. But the paper that everyone's going crazy about at the show is <laughs> this, because, well, it's a craft show and it's fun. I, I don't know why. But this is Silver Sparkle, and although I'm not a fan of glitter, this paper is really cool because it doesn't contain any glitter, first of all. It's a printed process, so this has no texture to it. It's a smooth cardstock. <laughs> I was going to take out a piece, hand it to Debbie, there you go. But it's a nice weight cardstock, but it's a sparkly paper that not only is very cool for that little sparkle appearance, but it is beautiful when you ink it. So if you look in here, that's when you use alcohol inks on this sparkly paper. It takes on beautiful colored background. Very different than the deco sheet. This was ideology deco sheet that I did. This was that uh, vinyl-y, sparkly stuff. This you can see much finer, much lighter, and of course, it's paper. So, in addition to those substrates, even though we had some great papers, we wanted to recognize the art market because a lot of people are doing more mixed media art and that is why we introduced alcohol ink hardcore art panels. What this is, this is a masonite or a wood based product. Okay, so there's wood in there that is laminated with this vinyl material. It's not any of these substrates. We actually teamed up with a company called Masterpiece who um, does all the canvas boards and stuff in the art world. You know, those, cam those wrapped canvas that you find. And he approached us at the art show we were at last year and he goes, I've got this material that painters don't like to paint on because it's kind of vinyl, but I think these inks would work on it. And I absolutely love it because you can put this ink right over the top of it 
and it creates a great substrate for this. You can use your alcohol inks, your archival inks, your lifting, and now you just have art. These come in four by four, five by seven, and then a multi-pack of different shapes and sizes. So you've got four different options. So let's get all this stuff going. Let's put this to work, get rid of some of this oxide. So when you work with alcohol ink, just know that this is a fluid medium and it has uh, a really great kind of open play time. Some things to keep in mind is that because these are translucent, we want to be somewhat aware of the colors we choose, okay? Too many translucent colors could end up with mud, unless you work on a substrate like Yupo or Hardcore, something that's going to be very, very forgiving. When alcohol inks first hit the market, everyone was using glossy paper. That's what we did. You just used, um, I don't even know if I have a pack in here left in there. But glossy cardstock is a clay-based paper, and although it's slick, it absorbs every layer of color. If you work on something like this, something like Yupo, you can just throw caution to the wind. You can add as many colors as you want and constantly change it. I'm gonna use colors and I'm also going to use pearls. Now the pearls, these have to be shaken up because there is that little bit of pearl at the bottom, but these are not a mixative. So if you've used a metallic mixative and you know you have to shake the snot out of it and bang it on the table and all of that, you don't need to do that with the pearls, okay? You just have to, you just have to give it a mix because it is not that metallic pigment, it's mica. And you can see how quick it just swirls into the bottle. If you are an alcohol ink user, here's a tip. I like to use my alcohol inks a lot. And when I use them, uh, I pretty much want to be ready to go. So if you have an alcohol storage tin and you're gonna put your pearls in the tin, now start storing your tin like this, okay? Because that's gonna keep that, that pigment on the side and it mixes in one shape instead of it settling on the bottom and then you really have to shake it up. So if you plan on using the inks, not everybody uses it. Some of us are collectors. <laughs> we know who we are, yeah. Just want it, just for the sake of having it. You want your name on it. Put it on the shelf, make sure all the labels are facing out. I won't judge you, that's okay. So. <laughs> But see, I can just mix them all up at once. And once they're mixed, you don't have to shake them every single time you pick it up. It's not a mixative, all right? So I'm just gonna take off the lids. At home, I'm very particular now because I don't like that little cross-contamination. So when I work at home on my media mat, I put the little lid next to the bottle all the way across my palette, so I know. But these are not my inks. These are Ranger set, so <laughs> as you can tell, my kind of demo strategy is just go for it. Just put it out there. But I'll probably clean them up for them. Probably not. Yeah. All right, so we got those open. Then we're gonna open up some, oh, this is an alcohol pearl, I don't want that. These are just inks, yes. Then I'm just gonna open up some ink because I like to use the inks with the pearls. I think if you just use the pearls, that's fine. Very soft, very subtle, but also uh, very much one dimensional in my opinion. Let's get a couple of other colors. Wild plum, is there a little red pepper? Oh yeah. Okay. Never have enough inks, not in my world. Okay, so when we go to use these, we can go with our traditional ink applicator tool, that's fine. But we can also just take this ink and apply it directly to the paper. Because even on something like Yupo, um, it's always going to blend around, right? Even if you drip it on, it's not like an alcohol ink cardstock that's gonna mar it or stain that. And so even just taking that tool and swirling it around, right away you can see just that little bit of pearl, that shimmer as it's drying, okay? But we're gonna keep going with this one. So I'm gonna take some inks. The reason I like to just start by throwing inks on there is it just kind of gets you out of your head, right? Sometimes people go, I don't know where to start, I don't know what to do. Well, this one's just gonna be fun. It's gonna allow me to just take some colors, throw it on there, really throwing on some warm colors first but now of course we're going to go in with some cool colors some blues oh, let's use this one because i haven't opened it all right then i'll take the ink tool and i'll just start moving this around now if you just want some of that color to move around you could just move it like that but i think the key to any time getting alcohol ink to work is you need blending solution blending solution is to alcohol ink what water is to watercolor and that is that's the stuff that's really going to make this ink move do the dance, okay? Now with Yupo, I always like to show that you can make a hot mess like I'm doing and completely change it, okay? If you don't like the color that's going down, anytime you add color onto Yupo, it's going to replace what's underneath. It's not gonna add on top of it. It's not gonna be like that glossy paper that just eventually too many layers turn into mud. 
Straight color, of course, like an alcohol ink color, is going to give us that translucent window. If I went in with pearl, like a little alchemy, that's gonna give me a totally different look, right? Can you see that kind of sparkly, that little sizzle? Because the pearl is part of the ink. So you're not getting a separation of metallic and dye like we would with a mixative. We're literally getting color on color, but some colors could be just translucent, some could be a little pearly, but if you put them on wet, can you see how this ink, remember this was just alcohol ink, this particular yellow is starting to get a little bit of that pearl as it's drying because we put it over pearl. It's weird. It's, it's going to be kind of like this learning curve if you're not totally familiar with alcohol ink and you're not used to what they do, figuring out when to use what. There's no right or wrong now with these inks. Before it was like, okay, I need to use ink and just a little bit of mixative. Now with the pearls, man, we do so much. We're going to throw in a little bit of envy, a little bit more enchantment. And let's use some pearl. Let's use a little bit of pool. And let's go in with some blending solution. Okay, so what I want to share with you is on a background like this, you know, you could certainly go in and keep stamping out color and just say, okay, I'll do that. Maybe I want to add, I don't know, oh, uh, let's add some red. Okay, we'll add some red pepper. This is one of the things that I find very fascinating about surfaces that aren't necessarily porous. Some people would call this art. And I'm okay with this. Some people just be like, oh, wow, I love that. I would cut it as a background. Good for you. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let this dry. Now, alcohol inks will dry on their own in about 10 to 15 seconds in this quantity. But you can also use the heat tool. Even though they're flammable, heat is not going to make them ignite. Fire is going to make them ignite. So <laughs> as long as you're not drying by candlelight, you'll be fine using a heat tool on your alcohol inks. But once this is dry, we could leave it like that, or we can go in and change our background just by adding some blending solution. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into this, and I'm going to take my blending solution. I'm just going to start going right across this UFO. Oh my God. And then I'm just going to start getting a blend of color just to create that washed background. And I'm going to just set that down to dry. Okay. Now while that's drying, we're going to take another substrate. Let's take a... Uh, let's take some sparkle, okay? Let's take some of that. So silver sparkle is really interesting because when we go in and work with this, the first time I used this, I thought, oh my gosh, I totally screwed up this paper. Because when you add alcohol ink to this one, and I'm gonna just use ink, we can use pearl on silver sparkle, but it's a waste because you won't see the pearl in this paper at all. The sparkle is going to overpower this. This was super interesting to me because as I started to ink this, as you can see, it totally dulled out that sparkle. I looked at that and I'm like, oh, that paper doesn't work with alcohol ink, and I threw it in the trash. Really, when Ranger sent it to me, sent off that email, I'm like, sorry, it doesn't work, it doesn't work with alcohol ink. And then I walked by the trash later that day and it was sparkly, I'm like, what, what is that? I picked it back out, I'm like, sorry, it works, not sure what's going on. I found that when you add alcohol ink to this, even if you add blending solution and everything else to this background, for whatever reason, the resin in this ink, while it's wet, totally dulls out that sparkle. But once it dries, and it is a heat-stable paper, we will get that sparkle. So you'll see that as it dries. And did you use the pearl on it as well as the... You could, but you wouldn't notice any difference. It would look exactly the same. So once that dries, we're back to sparkly paper, okay? Now this paper, even though it had kind of this cool tooth to it, was still reactive. So even if you wanted to go in, again, and do kind of like your blending solution drip, because that seems to be kind of a fun background, I can get that color to re-wet, which I found super, super interesting because normally when we're working on a background, especially on something glittery like this, you're not getting that play. You're not getting, it just gonna absorb right into the surface. And this paper, and the UPO and the hardcore board all has kind of this creative playtime. Now, if you don't like this blend, again, you can stick kind of, what did I do with, there we go. Put that over there. We can still go back to that traditional kind of ink tool and we can always go in and soften out those lines as long as that ink is wet. But then once it dries, we're gonna be back to sparkle. And I love this because the, just the color blend of that wild. Thank it's you. It's magical. Thank you. You're welcome. 
So this, whether you're going to die cut or punch or do anything out of that, I just think that that makes for a beautiful, beautiful background. Great paper, yeah. And this thing that we just kind of let it dry, there again, I would go in and stamp, use lifting, die cut something out of it. But I mean, from starting out with just that stamp thing, I love cropping out different elements of that. So let me get into, I don't know if I have any hardcore panels. This seems a little big, but I'll use it. All right, we want, we can take some color, take a little bit of celestial, that'll be cool. Take a little bit of blending solution. Okay. All right, I'm just adding some color onto this one. Mm, I don't wanna use that. Oh, smolder, yeah. Smolder is like mushroom. That's a good one. I'm gonna give it some movement. Don't be afraid to play. What I'm gonna do on this one, we're just gonna add a little bit of lift ink onto this one, all right? And you can see that right from the bottle, kind of the more you drip that on, the more intense that color is going to be. Sometimes I'm dripping it on, sometimes I'm using the ink tool, no right or wrong, just whatever it is that you like. Uh, let's see, what is this? Oh, we'll go with some Envy. Not much of that. I love that pearl. Oh my gosh. So cool. Yeah. But I also like that when I kind of introduce that to the background, it creates a very, very kind of a fluid nature. And how you move a tool, that's going to determine the overall effect or pattern of a background. So let's say we're happy with that. I'm not, but <laughs> let's just say we are. I'm almost happy. Are you uh, able to add foil? You know how you can add foil just before it's totally dry? Yes, you can add foil. As it's really, the foil is sticking to the resin. So as long as you have enough ink on the substrate, then yes, you can add foil to that. Okay. All right, so this background has ink on it. We could leave it as is, but we can also go in and use lift ink. So lift ink is designed to lift ink from a non-porous surface and transfer it to a porous surface. So you can take an image and find some sort of cool stamp that we want to use. These are a little delicate. Let me get something bolder. Let's see what we have in here. I'm sure I have some sort of swirl or fragment or something crazy. From the mixed media, stitching, flowers. Uh, we'll take that. We'll take a scroll stamp. I'm gonna stick that onto a block. I'm just gonna take some lift ink. So alcohol lift ink is designed to really go in and lift off that ink. What you have to be careful with, it's not designed to lift the pearls. So if you use too much pearl or too much metallic, it's not gonna be able to go through that pigment. It's just designed to lift the dye. But we're gonna see what happens. I know I used a little bit of pearl, but it doesn't seem like too much, but we'll see what we get. So when we stamp it, we can just go in, decide where we wanna put that image. I think I'll go in from the side. Just gonna stamp it down. Stamp down with purpose. We're gonna lift that off. Now, if you had something porous, well, this is specialty. Let's see what I have here. Oh, that's watercolor. That'd be okay. Not really what I want. Oh, that's what, no, that's what I want. No, 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 no. I can't believe I don't have anything I want. Ah, that's what I want. Let's take glossy, of course. Is the ink is it better to do with the ink is sort of a, still a little bit wet, or can you go in when no, it's dry? No, I dried it with a heat tool. Okay, so, you yeah, can, so it's, it's better dry. to go in when it's dry, Absolutely. completely dry? For okay. lifting? Because I have that lifting For lifting, yeah, yeah, it needs to be dry. It needs you to be dry. You can't lift anything wet. Okay. Yep. And then that's one just going to transfer our image, right. okay? So, so it can pretty. lift and it can transfer. So right away what I like about this is the fact that I can pick up my alcohol ink, and now that's permanent. So I basically stamped with alcohol ink. This thing, though, we still want to lift. So I'll just take a paper towel, something absorbent, and we're going to lift this. And that means I'm just gonna start dabbing it. Because even though you can see it, we haven't lifted off the ink yet. And as you dab, you'll see that it starts to kind of come into focus. That's what I didn't do. <laughs> yeah, if you don't yeah. lift it off, you haven't lifted it off. Yep. And you can see that it's taking the ink off of that image. So you don't want to go in and just wipe it off, because if you go in and wipe it off, yeah. Well, you'll just end up smearing everything.
And I just dab this until I look at the paper towel and I don't see any ink coming off. And once I'm happy with that, just going to dust that off. And now we have just a resistive surface that again, we can go in and stamp another image. So here I just went in and did lift with the little fragment and did some stamping. But lifting's cool because a lot of times if you're working with alcohol inks and you're only doing backgrounds, the fact that we can create these colorful backgrounds and stamp with it, ridiculous, right? So I can take Yupo, I can take the same sheet of Yupo in my studio and just use it as a stamp pad, All right? So if I wanted to take this, let's try this one. This has a lot of pearl in it. I don't care. So these are new, right? The this one? Yes, yeah. the pearls are new. Uh, I'm going to try this one because I'm curious. Go for it. Curiosity. Go for well, it. We won't judge. That's it. That's just how it is. I just have to do it. If it's in my brain, I'm like, I must do it. Now, one thing about lifting, you always want to make sure you're starting with a clean stamp. Because anything left on your stamp will go onto your lifting pad. So I just start with some archival cleaner. Clean that off a little bit. Take a little bit of water. And we're just going to make sure this is dry. But like that color blend seems crazy to me. I really want to... What happens when you put the left ink on the white and then ink on top of it? Does that not work? Put the lift ink on... So if you start with the, with the lift ink on the bottom and then put the... It's not a resist. It's, not a, it's resist. a lift. Okay. Yeah, so if you put it on and ink over it, you just ink over it. It would, it would eat it up. Yeah. It would be cool if it was a resist. Make sure I have enough lift ink on this one. So I'm going to try to eat through a few layers. Let's see what's going to happen. All right, so for this, I think I'll go in this area right here. I'm just going to stamp this down. Pick that up. I don't see much ink on here myself. I see where there is ink, but wherever there's pearl, I don't see anything. But we'll see in a second. No. I mean, it lifts, but yeah, it doesn't lift like I pretty, want it to, right? Yeah. It will it always, pretty. yeah, it it's will always lift pretty. subtle. And, it, and it's still going to lift some, yeah. but the thing about lifting is it can't eat through pigment. But it's, I mean, you're still going to see that it does some of the image. But now you'll be able to see like where there was more ink and where there was more pearl. Where there was ink, went right through. Where there was pearl, acts as a barrier. But I don't know, this is kind of cool. <laughs> You know, this looks like I did it first. This looks like I kind of stamped you underneath play, and then went over the top. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty awesome to me. Might be a new thing I do with pearls now. <laughs> you know, do some ink and drip some pearls over the top of that. Because I do like that. So I like how subtle that is. Is all this done with the pearls? I missed all that. Well, pearl, no, pearl and mix. some of the stuff. Yeah, mix. I mean, the pearl is right. going to be, like this one is all pearl. Yeah, it just has such a beautiful so I'm luster go broke, to it. broke, you realize this. Well, yeah. I know. <laughs> All I know. of us here yeah. are going to go broke. I just think that, Thanks you know, you. having okay. some new things in there, just some new ways that we can add these inks, especially something very soft and subtle, yeah. that is, I think, most exciting about that because that little pearlescent sheen and all those colors yeah. just really, really pretty. Thanks. That's what very I love much. about alcohol okay. pearls. Yeah.